Hello listeners, a warm welcome to Views on Health. A great pleasure indeed to have with me on the program today, Professor Priyanga Ranasinghe, who is a professor in pharmacology, the Department of Pharmacology at the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo. A warm welcome to SLBC and our studio, Professor. Thank you, Fatima. It's a pleasure to be here. And for the information of our listeners, Professor Priyanga Ranasinghe is going to focus on the management of hypertension. Hypertension, as uh, most listeners know, is uh, more commonly known as high blood pressure and a topic that we have touched on in this series of programs uh, time and again. However, uh, Professor Priyangarana Singh in his capacity as a professor in pharmacology has a different perspective to share with our listeners in the management of hypertension. Having said that, by way of an introduction, over to Professor to talk about management of hypertension. Yes, thank you, Fatima. Um, I think, um, first of all, I must uh, tell you why hypertension is very important, especially for our population. Um, hypertension probably is one of the most commonest uh, non-communicable diseases that we see. Um, if you take, for example, the data from Sri Lanka, uh, a research study we did about 10 years ago showed that the presence of hypertension among adults is about 20 to 25 percent. More recent data, however, indicates that this has gone up. Uh, and um, a recent study done shows that about 40 percent of adults uh, over the age of 30 years in Sri Lanka are known to be having high blood pressure. So it is very common. Uh, and one of the challenges in hypertension is that most of the people are not aware about the presence of high blood pressure. As you know, unless you check your blood pressure, hypertension is a is what we call an asymptomatic disease. It doesn't cause symptoms in most of the people un until you get complications that are associated with hypertension. And the common problems that we encounter at the end are things like uh, what we call heart attacks, uh, things like stroke, and hypertension is one of the commonest causes for kidney disease. So until people get those complications that are associated with hypertension, most people remain unaware. And what is said in the literature, what evidence shows is that about half of the population with hypertension don't know that they have hypertension. So that is a challenge, especially in a population like ours. And then the other challenge is, even when you are diagnosed, since it is a chronic disease that requires lifelong treatment, um, even when you are diagnosed and started on therapy, people don't take their medicines properly for many reasons, which we will go on to discuss uh, subsequently. So those are the two key challenges in hypertension. Number one, people don't know they have high blood pressure. Number two, when they know, they don't take the medicines properly. Uh, thank you for that uh, uh, introduction to the topic, Professor. Now, any person you say that people over 40 years are affected and uh, basically a large percentage of that uh, population. Uh, but having said that, um, wouldn't there be some sort of sign that people can be aware of, or sign, signs rather, uh, where, okay, I'm having this regularly or this is coming up, every now and then, um, do I have high blood pressure? Is my pressure going up? Um, so would there be some sort of signs that a person can, you know, uh, think of or remember, well, this is, what, this is what I've been told. I think I'm coming in for my, you know, this condition and I need to check it out with my doctor. Yes. Uh, so um, as I said earlier, hypertension, one of the main problems, it's largely an asymptomatic disease. One of the common symptoms that are associated, I would say, with hypertension is headache, if at all. But other than that, uh, it causes minimal symptoms. So generally, we advise people, once they are especially over the age of 40 years, to get their blood pressure checked once a year. Uh, and um, the, the diagnosis of hypertension is also a challenge because I must distinguish between the presence of high blood pressure and hypertension. Now, 
as you know blood pressure is something that is very variable and it changes with a lot of things even uh, during the day a person's blood pressure changes and it is affected by stress it is affected by exertion so when you diagnose a patient with hypertension it is very important that you measure blood pressure adequately and this is a message for our healthcare professionals um that when you are checking blood pressure it is very important that the person is rested adequately that you used an appropriate device to measure the blood pressure uh, so hypertension high blood pressure and hypertension are not the same thank you for that clarification because i was under the impression that when you say you have hypertension you have high blood pressure which is from a lay perspective we think that it is one is one and the same thing so it's the hypertension that brings on the high blood pressure is that the correct thing yeah the, the way i would put it is hypertension is sustained high blood pressure whereas you and i can occasionally have high blood pressures depending on what we do and so on uh, when somebody has sustained elevation in the blood pressure which is above what we call the normal value then you di- then you say a person is hypertensive so what is the normal value there so uh, we diagnose generally hypertension when your blood pressure is above 140 90 there are two readings one is what we call systolic blood pressure which is the upper value of 140 the second reading is diastolic blood pressure which is 90 so when the blood pressure is sustained around above 140 90 we diagnose as hypertension so in that situation professor obviously you have to put the patient on medication and uh, and you expect the medication if it's properly taken if medical advice is followed that it will be under control am i right in assuming that yes oh, and and according also just to add to that uh, you would obviously have other uh, do's and don'ts and based on that that you can control the level of uh, the pressure in the blood yeah that's very true um so one of the things that we do when you di- are diagnosed with hypertension there are two key strategies that are involved one thing is what we call putting them on medicine we call that pharmacological management then there is a host of other things that are involved what we call lifestyle modifications or in other words non pharmacological management so one of the key things is uh, there are guidelines where which healthcare professionals follow uh, to decide on which medicine to start for which patient it depends not only of uh, the patient's age and uh, factors but also the presence of other diseases so your healthcare professional can recommend to you depending on your requirements what the best medicine would be so that is number one so um, from your perspective it is important that you continue taking the medicines but one of the t- key things about pharmacological management of high blood pressure is the need for you to regularly keep a check on your blood pressure because as you know uh, un- un- unlike diseases like for example diabetes there is no blood test that will tell you whether your blood pressure is controlled the only way to check is if you check your blood pressure regularly so uh, parallel to starting treatment it is also important that once you are started on treatment while you are taking the medicines that you continue to monitor and check your blood pressure regularly now especially in countries like uk uh, and other european countries they re- go to the level where people are advised to buy their own uh, blood pressure devices so that they could keep a tab on their blood pressures and when patients come to the clinic they come with a set of readings um so uh, that helps the doctor to either increase or add on other medicines to control the blood pressure because there is a saying irrespective of what medicine you use the key thing is to get your blood pressure under control so that is number 1 and then there's a parallel arm which is as i said non pharmacological management and this is what we call lifestyle modifications which will help to reduce blood pressure things like weight reduction cutting down on your salt increasing physical activity are things that are established and shown in research to get your blood pressure down um so uh, i will talk about salt a little bit more um because uh, 
there are a lot of things now people say when we talk to patients in the clinic they say that they hardly add any salt to their food but what we don't realize is a lot of the food that we consume like things like butter bread uh, these items already contain an additional amount of salt so we have to be careful not to it's not only about adding extra toll to your meals but the items that contain salt we have to uh, take in moderation Uh, that's interesting uh, professor but then there is this um, again back to a uh, lay perspective um, people say that uh, such control in the intake of salt uh, brings one sodium levels down could you comment on that please yeah i mean this is a uh, probably a common misconception because um, now there's a regulated level of sodium in the body and in most people uh, this is controlled by hormones and other mechanisms to keep it within a definite range and as long as your kidneys and things are functioning okay the body is able to compensate uh, and keep your sodium at a standard level so uh, i wouldn't say cutting down on your salt would drop your so- sodium levels to dangerous levels to cause any problems to be honest thank you for that clarification just going on from there you know when you talk about uh, uh, the the causes i mean that will, one can be affected rather heart disease uh, strokes kidney uh, we never heard of the kidney being affected because of excess salt how does that happen yeah so um, the one of the common reason now sri lanka has a lot of uh, patients with chronic kidney disease and we see a um, lot of transplant units uh, dialysis units being set up and probably one of the commonest contributors to this is high blood pressure uh, because the high blood pressure tends to damage the uh, blood supply to the kidneys and also affect the filtering mechanisms and when the high blood pressure is sustained over a period of time you see that uh, a person's kidney function decline not only that even for patients with kidney disease um, there is evidence from research to show that if you optimize and control your blood pressure you can slow down the decline in the kidney function so if you are a patient with chronic kidney disease if you get your blood pressure under control you can slow the progress of the kidney disease so that um, you have a longer time uh, till you require a transplant or need dialysis thank you once again that's interesting uh, professor when you talk of um, uh, the sort of the non pharmacological aspect of uh, uh, this uh, issue of you know hypertension high blood pressure all of that and um, how does one address that is lifestyle yes uh, that will include of course your food your exercise your sleep patterns uh, that you try to be as uh, less stressful as possible in your day to day activities uh, not easy all the time uh, how best can one manage that as you said right correctly fatima all of these factors um, tend to push your blood pressure up and um, i think in the current day and age stress is also probably uh, something that is not as equally quantified as a contributor to high blood pressure similar to the other things so it's very important that you keep your stress levels under control and um, there are a lot of things that a person could try to do that i mean everybody's jobs are very stressful so um, some people find doing some meditation very helpful some people find engaging in hobbies really helpful so people take up things like photography uh, planting uh, and so all sorts of various hobbies these are things uh, that you really need to look at uh, to control your stress level in what i'm trying to say is it's very important uh, to have that leisure time so that uh, you get time to relax and so on and manage your stress levels which is a very huge contributor i think to uh, high blood pressure in our population yeah so time management is important time management is important at the end of the day it's important to realize what you can and cannot do uh, and uh, get your priorities right Okay thank you uh, professor you said that um, uh, medication that you focus on it would you go to that area please yes um so for hypertension management there are many different classes of medicines as we call it um 
they are very sort of effective in getting the blood pressure down um which medication is required for which patient is dependent upon lot of factors there are things like uh, there are patient related factors things like your age things like um, uh, your race in the sense uh, there is a difference in selecting medications between uh, europeans and uh, the the black africans there are different classes that are chosen um and then there are other factors for example the recommended medicine for somebody with hypertension and diabetes is different from the medicine for us somebody with hypertension alone so uh, there are about three or four classes of primary medicines that we use all of them are good at getting the blood pressure down uh, but the key challenges that we face is number one as i said earlier patients don't take their medicines uh, regularly for many reasons um, some of them for, simply forget uh, with their lifestyle and uh, some of them do experience uh, adverse effects unfortunately which are related to the medicine but the important thing uh, i think is even if you get adverse effects what you have to realize is uh, rather than simply discontinuing the medicine it is important that you go back to your healthcare provider and uh, tell them about this because as i said there are many medicines available to control the blood pressure so the fact that you got an adverse effect for one medicine doesn't mean that you would get for the other so uh, don't discontinue completely don't give up on medicines uh, talk to your healthcare provider and he or she would be able to give you a suitable alternative so if i am to say uh, if you take all the licensed medicine for hypertension uh, at the moment there are about 60 medicines not all of them are first line or primary medicines but what i wanted to highlight is the fact that there are many different medicines available so it's very important as i said earlier uh, irrespective of the medicine that you use the target is to get your blood pressure under control so don't give up on taking medicines talk to your healthcare provider continue measuring your blood pressure regularly and uh, keep your blood pressure in check what could uh, these adverse uh, reactions be in how would one uh, feel that uh, because of this i had to take this medicine i feel this whatever it is yeah so that is a difficult question to answer because the adverse effects uh, differ between the different medicines um so uh, one of the common things that you see for example with uh, these medicines most of them is since they drop the blood pressure sometimes they drop it too much and um, people at least at the beginning uh, they feel that they are dizzy when they take these medicines uh, especially when they uh, um, sit up from a lying down position uh, so in that case what we generally advise patients to do number one when you are sitting up from a lying down position don't stand up immediately if you are lying down first sit spend a few minutes and then stand up which will help you to minimize the dizziness but if this continues to happen maybe you are on a higher dose so if you go and talk to your healthcare provider they will be able to get you down to a, a lower dose of that so that is something commonly that you see certain medicines do affect uh, depending on how they work they affect uh, what we call the sodium and the potassium levels um and some of the medicines especially if you have kidney disease we generally recommend that the kidney function and the the electrolytes or the sodium and the potassium be checked at regular intervals but that is only for certain medicines um some medicines really cause sleep disturbances and things and so on but it's highly dependent on what you are using and it's highly variable also between people so the important th- and some of the things that people attribute as adverse effects of the medicine is truly not related to that so uh, it's just a coincidence as these two have occurred together and uh, we jump to the conclusion that this is due to the medicine but if you talk to your healthcare professional they would be able to clarify it to you and uh, they will be able to tell you whether this is due to the medicine or not if it is due to the medicine offer you an alternative uh, do you think professor it is like uh, would be uh, good to stress to reiterate to emphasize whatever word you use to describe it uh, to our listeners that um, number one uh, that it's always like you 
said good advice go back to your doctor and check it out uh, don't form uh, opinions or don't assume this is because of this or this was because of that and um, and then and then do what you think you need to do to get over that by yourself uh, because um, sometimes it's a, it's a human thing I think to think okay I, I think because of this so I better cut down on this and then you sit back having done that by yourself whereas the doctor would have told you something different so could you please stress on that yes exactly and I think that's uh, very pertinent uh, especially uh, to our population uh, Fatima um, because um, there's a lot of misconceptions in relation to health and for some reason our, our population is a very literate population but for some th- reason there is a reluctance to go to a healthcare professional and ask and what happens is um, they talk to friends talk to relatives and uh, then get their own opinions on the medicines and completely stop taking medicines uh, so number one go to your healthcare provider talk to them, seek advice and uh, if you are tech savvy there is a lot of information and patient educational material available on the internet specifically targeting uh, patients with high blood pressure there is good material available so if you are tech savvy that is something you could look up, there are reliable sources available Um, and then um, the other thing I can tell you is avoid passing on misinformation to others Thank you, Doctor, because, uh, we, like you said, uh, we tend to get carried away with our own perceptions and uh, beliefs, and then uh, one can end up with a lot of trouble. Uh, so, um, heart attacks, strokes, kidney disease, all three are dangerous. Uh, can there be um, a person, for example, who has a heart condition, can also have a kidney uh, problem because of uh, hypertension is that a possibility yes so these diseases unfortunately tend to occur together Um, that is the unfortunate problem with hypertension and also uh, in our population to extend diabetes uh, which also causes this issue so we sometimes see unfortunate patients who end up getting three or four of these diseases. Um, So that is the challenge. And when that happens, uh, the management of the condition also becomes challenging because then you will be put on multiple medications and you will be expected to take them regularly on a daily basis for the rest of your life. And uh, these medicines also sometimes um, interact with each other, affecting their uh, effectiveness and the interactions also sometimes are responsible for adverse effects or side effects people experience. Um, So as I said at the very beginning, the key thing is to prevent you from getting there and if you are above 40 it is very good that you check your blood pressure at least once a year Uh, and if you do have a family history of these diseases we know that family history plays a key role in occurrence of blood pressure and all these other diseases so it's very important that you are extra careful that you regularly check keep tabs and Uh, if the blood pressure remains continuously high, get started on medicines so that you don't end up with these uh, chronic diseases which when they happen, unfortunately, at the moment, are irreversible. And another message I think which I forgot to mention earlier, uh, another common misconception uh, that I have seen patients say is that they are started on the medicines and then while on the medicine, Sussex. the blood pressure is normal. So they come back and ask whether can I come off the medicines now because my blood pressure is normal. Sussex. So what you have to realize is that Sussex. the blood pressure is normal because of the medicines. It is like a rubber ball kept under water. Soon as you take off the hand, which is the Sussex. medicines, the blood pressure will come back up again. Sussex. So once you have established high blood pressure or hypertension, it is irreversible it doesn't um, become normal and you will need to be on medicines to control the blood pressure. This is not like a infection where you get cured completely. Uh, so 
that is how the situation is at the moment we might find something new in the future but you will have to be on continuous medicines thank you so much professor and on that note we end this very interesting discussion on the management of hypertension we place on record our grateful thanks to professor priyanka ranasinghe professor in pharmacology department of pharmacology at the faculty of medicine university of colombo for sparing a very valuable time in the midst of a busy schedule to be with us on the program thank you so much professor thank you very much happy to be here my thanks also go to fatima reza for technical assistance I'm Fatima Razi Kaida saying good night and looking forward to your company next Monday same time on Views on Health. <laughs>